Hey, what up, everybody? BQ here. It is the Impact Lounge YouTube channel talking about the big news that hit Impact Wrestling last night. But really quick, my own big news. The Impact Lounge just this morning has hit 1 million views here on the channel. So thank you to everybody who's been a subscriber, everyone who's come along for the ride. Much appreciated. Really couldn't do this without you. This started out as a small YouTube channel to host a not very good podcast. And uh, it really was able to grow into the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. So thank you so much. And if it's your first time here, please consider that subscribe button. I've been trying to do a lot more video content here on the channel, but I'm not feeling too good this morning. So I'm kind of sitting behind the microphone talking to you guys about the big news of Deanna Perrazzo coming to Impact Wrestling. She was one of the very first people I interviewed here on the channel. And this is someone who I've got a lot of respect for because... She was one of the first people on the indie scene, on social media, to really embrace being a free agent and not being locked down to a particular company. And she put in a lot of work. She was, um, you know, a, a teacher for quite a while and was still doing a lot of indie work. And obviously, uh, the run in Ring of Honor. She's done a couple of impact dates in the past. Knockouts, knockdown with Madison Rain had a really excellent match. And uh, she was part of a not, uh, Knockouts Gauntlet Battle Royal. I think it was on the debut of Pop TV, actually. And a lot of people really wanted to see her come over at the time. And um, as I said, she's someone that really early on embraced being a free agent, not rushing any decisions, and really building a resume for herself. And, you know, as Impact fans, we love those people who come forward and say, you know, this NXT system wasn't for me. I understand there's a process here, but I came in with some momentum, with a name, with a buzz, with a resume, and I'm sitting on the sidelines with these girls who just started wrestling. So we like someone who's got a chip on their shoulder. Sammy Callahan was one of the pioneers of really having that chip on their shoulder and, and not wanting to be in that NXT process anymore and, and betting on themselves. So now Deanna Perrazzo is betting on herself. Now I'm raising my hand right now. You guys can't see me. I'm the first one to say that I did not think she was coming to Impact, that I thought she was going to end up in AEW. If you're familiar with, you know, if you're a basketball fan like myself, you know, they, t they have that term, someone's a glue guy. They're not the worst person on the team. They're not the best. They're someone in the middle who makes all the pieces fit and you can build around them. They're a good, talented person, but they're someone you can build around. They bridge that gap. And I thought, you know, for what AEW is trying to do, do over there, I thought she was actually the perfect addition, and she is she's Britt Baker's best friend, and she has said that she wanted to wrestle there, and she had said that she she actually had regrets for not moving forward with them and going the NXT route instead. So for me, I'm I was surprised that she came over, but it's a great surprise. You know, she's when she cut the video pa uh, the promo on the video package last night, you could just see because I haven't you know I don't watch NXT, I haven't seen anything she's done. Um, as a matter of fact, when she signed there, I was like, I guess I'm never, never going to see her wrestle again, you know? And, um, I could see, wow, she's really fine tuned. She's just, she's just come a long way. And the knockouts division is getting so good folks. I'm my next upload. As soon as I'm done here, I'm going to be doing a podcast about the knockouts division. You guys don't want to miss it. So make sure you, um, keep an eye out for that later today. Make sure you subscribe if, you know, if it's your first time here, because the knockouts division is doing some really special things. People ask me a lot, BQ, what would you do? You have all these criticisms. What would you do to build buzz with impact wrestling? And this was something that I've only said a couple times on the channel. And I was actually going to do it in a future podcast. Um, you know, 10 things I would do to create buzz or whatever it is. And one of them was going to be to, to sign multiple knockouts, not just one, not just two here and there, but to sign multiple around the same time. I, you know, my idea was to announce, you know, four or five at the same time. But, you know, this from week to week, we're just getting new faces and we're not losing faces either. And here's a really interesting thing about the knockouts division right now. If Tessa Blanchard loses that world title or when she does, she can actually come back into the knockouts division because there's that much more talent to work with than what she had to work with before. Like it was a natural progression for her to do the intergender stuff and move on to working with the guys to be the world champion. But now they can actually pull her back to this division and there's women uh, close to her level. You know, if, if I wanted to add another name to this list, I would throw Rachel Ellering in there because she's someone who I always thought was on Tessa's 
level, at least for what I saw of her. And um, hopefully that's the next domino uh, to fall and just make this, you know, division uh, even greater. And I've always said, I've always said this, I just said it last week, the one area that Impact can continue to compete in with other companies and, and excel in, as a matter of fact, is their presentation of women's wrestling. It's always been uh, and the the best opportunity for women to come in. They might not have the whole, you know, the most eyes and viewers in the world, but the knockouts division has always provided the best opportunity to come in and build a name for yourself and, and to, to really do some good work with some talented people. This is the best division we're seeing right now, folks, since the, the glory days of TNA with the knockouts division there like this, we've, we've been wanting this. People have been asking for this and the knockout still continues. If you look at the Kimberly segments, the last two she's had, they're the highest viewed segments on the YouTube channel in the last three weeks. So I think, I hope, I hope impact is paying attention to these numbers saying, you know what? We can build some real momentum with this knockouts division. And they, and they re-signed Sue Young. They weren't like, hey, hit the bricks. We got new girls coming in. Like they're just adding, they're just adding. We're finally getting that strong, that big division that we've been wanting for a long time. And this is someone that is, is, is just a really killer addition to an already growing, outstanding division. So again, folks, keep your keep your eyes and ears out. I've got a podcast coming about the knockouts division that I'm really excited about. As soon as I'm done talking here, I'm going to be recording it. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments about the addition of Deanna Perrazzo, what that could mean for the knockouts division. I'm your boy, BQ. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.